Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to Morning Rounds. Today's subject is breast cancer, breast implants. What's the story today? Back in 2008, there were reports of a very rare kind of cancer associated uh, in women who'd had breast implants. Now, you remember decades ago, there was a question about breast cancer in women with silicone implants, and that proved not to be the case. But these reports, going back at least to 2008, uh, were a more substantial. Uh, in 2011, uh, the number of reports of this kind of cancer uh, increased, and just recently, the uh, Food and Drug Administration, the FDA, and the World Health Organization um, have issued uh, reports that there is a definitive increased risk for cancer in women with breast implants. So what's the story? This particular cancer is not a breast cancer as we understand it. It occurs around the implant, not in the breast. The type of cancer is a rare cancer. Um, it's called anaplastic large cell lymphoma. So that's a mouthful. What does that mean? Anaplastic means that the cells are very wild and crazy looking, like, you know, the guys at the frat house, the night of homecoming. Large means the cells are large, and lymphoma means that these cells originate from the immune system in the blood. So anaplastic large cell lymphoma, crazy large cells in the blood, that's where they originate, but they are located around the implant and not in the breast itself. So what are the signs and symptoms? The signs would be um, an enlargement of one of the breasts, um, thickening, um, some mass on occasion. Uh, there might be uh, some skin changes. Uh, the breast might be firmer than usual. One breast might look distinctly different from the other. And uh, a sign would be, I'm, I'm sorry, a symptom would be pain. Um, so these are the kinds of presenting signs and symptoms of this rare form of blood cancer. By the way, the cell that is involved in this particular cancer uh, is a T cell, particular type of cell uh, in uh, the bloodstream. Uh, so what else can we understand about this? Um, do all women who have breast implants have an increased risk for this anaplastic large cell lymphoma? Yes, but the majority of the cases occur in women who've had textured implants. So what are textured implants? There are two types of implants in terms of the shell. Uh, a textured shell which is sticky and is placed um, often by plastic surgeons so that the implant will stay where it's put, although there are other plastic surgeons who say that the textured implant uh, is no more or less stable than a smooth shelled implant. Uh, so the textured implants seem to have a much higher risk for this kind of lymphoma than the smooth breast implants. But there have been some reports of this lymphoma in women with smooth implants. So what is the treatment? Well, the good news is that this particular kind of lymphoma is localized in these cases. Um, often when the um, doctor suspects that there might be a lymphoma around the implant, they'll take a sample of the fluid uh, that is surrounding the implant, and they'll see the T cells, the malignant T cells in that fluid. The treatment as of today is to remove the implant and the tissue around it. You don't have to remove the breast. It might be a good idea to remove the other implant, but that's optional. Um, and then the question is, well, do you need radiation therapy or chemotherapy? Um, it turns out that this particular type of anaplastic large cell lymphoma is not aggressive. It tends not to be aggressive. It can be easily treated. Uh, the prognosis is excellent. Occasionally, 
Some of those cells may migrate, metastasize to the axillary lymph nodes, and your doctors may recommend some additional therapy, radiation therapy or chemotherapy. But at this time, surgery to remove the implant and the tissue uh, is what is considered to be the best first step. Lastly, the question might occur to you, well, why? What's going on? I mean, why would a woman who has breast implants get a cancer? And although we don't know, and we may not know for a long time if ever, there is a long history of knowing that when there is a chronic inflammation or a wound that does not heal, for instance, that that predisposes to the future development of a cancer. There was a particular cancer reported over 100 years ago um, in uh, what was known as a curling's ulcer, uh, a wound, a burned wound that for whatever reason did not heal, later on went on to develop a kind of cancer in that area. So this is my hypothesis that this may be one of the explanations for why women with these textured implants, which may produce a bit more inflammation, because they stay put, right? Uh, and this may, for one reason or another, lead to this increased risk of this very rare form of cancer, which is a cancer of the blood, not of the breast, that actually turns out to be not aggressive and fairly easy to treat, at least as far as we know today. So what are the take-home lessons? One, there definitely is an increased risk for this kind of cancer in women with breast implants primarily women who've had textured implants. The tumor is an anaplastic large cell lymphoma. It occurs in the blood, not in the breast. Treatment seems to be just to remove the implant. Um, you may or may not uh, be advised to have some additional therapy, but at this point it's not a particularly aggressive tumor and it can be very well treated. Uh, my suggestion now, my advice at this point is for all women who've had breast implants, to make an appointment to see their plastic surgeon. This is not an emergency. You don't have appendicitis. You do not have to go to the hospital and the surgery, the OR tonight. But it would be a good idea to make an appointment to see your plastic surgeon or a plastic surgeon, and you want to know, are my breast implants okay? Is there anything wrong? And also, do I have the textured implants or do I have the smooth shell implants? If there's any question, there are plenty of diagnostic studies that can be done to assure you that your implants are just fine, or if there's an abnormality, then they can pursue that. And if there is anything that turns out to be a problem, whether or not it's a lymphoma, it would be a good idea to make sure that your doctors report that to the FDA. Uh, only about 10% of problems that occur with drugs or with medical devices are ever reported to the FDA because of these adverse events. And the FDA and women need to know. And so if there is a problem, then make sure that your doctors do fill out the report and send that on to the FDA so that all of us can know and understand really what is the nature and the extent of this problem. Also make sure that your primary care doctor and your gynecologist have copies of those reports so that everybody is aware that you have implants, what kind of implants you have, and what is the nature of their integrity at this point. Are they fine or is there a problem and does anything else need to be done? So please share this video. I think this is really important. It's not one of these videos that uh, you might want to just think about, you know, um, putting on your social media. Please do this because um, this is a topic that's uh, appearing on the scroll on CNN. And I don't really think, based on what I've seen in the media in the past 24 hours, that it's been covered adequately enough so that women can walk away and feel like, okay, I know what everybody else knows, and I know it in um, the language and the vocabulary that I can comprehend. Uh, so please do share this. Like, subscribe, leave your questions below. I'll be happy to address them. Thumbs up to you, and thumbs down to breast cancer.